Today, you guys, I want to talk about George Janko. Is he good for Christianity? Is he bad? How is he influencing people with his big platform? I want to give my opinion as an Orthodox Christian, not to say that this is, this is some sort of official teaching, but this is just my opinion, looking at it with an Orthodox perspective. All right, guys, so let's get into it. So for those of you who know George Janko, you guys know about his story. Just a brief overview is, is this guy, look, he basically went into the sphere of Hollywood of the online community and he wanted to make it in. He became friends with one of the most famous YouTubers, Logan Paul. He got onto his podcast and on the episodes, every now and again, he would drop some Christian gems. He would say some something different to what you'd expect to hear from a worldly podcast. And so as time goes on, he gets kicked off this podcast for his Christian beliefs or that there's some sort of falling out. He felt victimized or treated badly by Logan Paul. And I, I believe it. I believe it. You know, people don't like hearing about this stuff and eventually they'll have enough. Look, going forward, we know now he's got his own podcast. Good on him. He's doing it his own way. He's got a big audience as well, which I guess most people never really expected. But a lot of people are thirsty for Christianity. They're thirsty to hear about the topic of religion in such a secular world, in such a subjective world. They want to hear some objectivity about the universe, its creation, us as human beings, our purpose on earth, what we're doing here, and what the Bible says about all these things. Now, I, I look at George Janko and I say, this guy, he has a lot of positive influence on people. You know, to give him credit, a lot of youth, a lot of people out there who would never otherwise hear about Christianity are hearing about Christ through him, which is great. Would we rather them not hear about Christ? Would we rather them just continue in secular topic after topic? No, but they're seeing Christ and they're seeing big figures like Jorge Masvidal. He was on his show talking about Jesus. Now imagine the millions of youth that have a Hispanic or Eastern European or some sort of cultural Christian background and they're doing MMA. You know, they're tough guys. They're not goody goodies that, you know, listen to their parents. They think that Christianity is only for goody goodies and now they're seeing Jorge Masvidal talk about Christ. They're going to be influenced like this is through the means of George Janko. We have him to thank for this. And many other guests that I'm not going to name now have you know, being part of this sort of movement towards towards Christ. It's a good thing. So with this platform, it's amazing that he's at least being the catalyst, introducing Christ. But with that great power, of course, now he's got big responsibility. He's got a responsibility. If he wants his channel to be a theological channel, if he wants his channel to be about himself, he, he, has, to, he has to make it clear. Like when I come here and I, and I speak on topics, I'm reading church fathers, I'm talking to priests, I'm asking my friends from church. I'm just, you know, I, I'm not trying to just make up my own thing. I'm not here just to entertain. Maybe my delivery might be different. Maybe I'm being myself on camera, sure, but I'm not delivering a message. I hope, I pray, that is not from the orthodox theological standpoint. That's really important. So when George Janko, when he has someone like Cliff on his show, when he has Stuart on with him, his son, when he starts philosophizing and contemplating, you know, for me, baptism, it means this. You know, I don't think that baptism is this. I think that this is what baptism really is. Now, George, you're, you have to be careful, man. What, what are you trying to tell people that your opinion on baptism is is gospel, that this is what it means, because they're on your channel, they're watching your stuff in the millions, and they're taking your word seriously. You're probably their only sort of source of Christian teaching for now. And so what you're saying about baptism is what they're going to go and tell other people. This, this is really, this is a huge thing in, in Christianity, baptism. So as Orthodox Christians, of course, we disagree with your notion of baptism. And I'm sure all the other Protestants might have something to say about that. Everyone's got their own thought about baptism.
but there cannot be many truths on baptism. There cannot be many truths on the Eucharist, John chapter 6. There can only be one truth. It has to be objective. It can't be subjective. It's not based on opinions. He's, he's just speaking his mind. And when it comes to topics of faith, when it comes to objective topics, your opinion does not matter. You can have your, your subjective experience, perhaps, that you can, you can use your testimony, how you came from A to B, what was your journey like, that's fine. But to say that this is the Christian teaching on this topic is very dangerous. Why does the Bible say, let, n- let not many of you become teachers? Because you'll receive a stricter judgment. You're receiving a stricter judgment because you're impacting more people. If I'm sitting here and making up stuff just so I can get clicks, Lord have mercy on me. This isn't a joke. This is things of salvation, the things of eternity. So although he has good intentions, although he, he's, he's doing it from the heart, to be doing this without the fear of God, and sure, people can say, yeah, buddy, he's got the fear of God. He is, he loves God. But to fear God and not to take theology seriously and to think like, ah, it doesn't matter, it's all the same, this and that, that to me isn't taking the faith seriously. To tell, to tell me that you love God, you fear Him, but His message is subjectively interpreted by many people and it means whatever it wants to mean, that's absurd. So now personally, as someone that I've been, I've been in the church for 10 years now, I've read a few books, I read the Bible cover to cover a few times. You know, I've listened to a few sermons, I've been to a few liturgies. I'm not a theologian, but just hearing how George Janko speaks on topics, I can't watch his channel, channel anymore. Maybe if he has like a celebrity and I'm like, oh, I'm keen to hear what he says about his like personal walk with Christ, that's interesting. But whenever he starts talking about what it means to him, Forget it, bro. Don't don't listen to his personal opinion. Because to me, God's yeah. an alien, right? Isn't he? Oh. God's an alien. He's not from this earth. He created it. He's yeah. out of it. Mm-hmm. So technically, okay. an alien okay. is okay. out of this earth. Okay. Aliens, are, are, to me, is like an angel. An angel's an alien. He's not, he's not walking around at Trader Joe's with me. You know, there is a consensus throughout history on what things have meant. This isn't a video about theology and about what things mean, but let's just bring up baptism and I'll end the video after this. In John chapter 3, Jesus is met by a figure called Nicodemus. Nicodemus comes to Christ in the night and Jesus starts explaining to him what baptism is. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He cannot enter into eternal life. Now, from that moment, Jesus said this. From the 12 apostles preaching Christianity, you know, St. Thomas to India, St. Mark to Egypt, St. Paul to like (laughs) the whole world, right? They were teaching that John 3 meant was referring to baptism. From then on, every bishop, every patriarch, every priest, for the next 1500 years was teaching that John chapter 3 is referring to baptism. Only after 1500 years, only after the Reformation, only after the many hundreds of different sects started to rise, started to teach different things, was there the notion that born again, the bo- to be born again, was an experience of transformation on the inside, where you pray the sinner's prayer, where you repent and you confess, and now you be- become born again. That was never the teaching. So now just logically, between me and you, logically, 
how, how can you sit here with that information presented in front of you and say, yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably not baptism. It's probably referring to being born again through, through a, a prayer of repentance and, and that. How, how can you ignore that every Christian believed this and then someone else changed it 1,500 years later and now some people believe this? Because every Catholic and every Orthodox still believe the original teaching on John chapter 3. Where, where does the logic come into this, into this equation? I don't want to go hard against Protestants in this video. But the reason so many Protestants don't open their, their hearts to Orthodoxy is because they hate Catholicism. They say it's pagan. They say it's demonic. They say all this stuff about Catholicism. And because Orthodoxy looks like Catholicism to them, they just dismiss everything to do with orthodoxy. They don't know anything about it, but nah, nah. They have priests. They have confession. They're the same, bro. Stuff them, bro. Stuff them. I'm going to be here with Pastor Jim down here, and, and we're going to sing our songs with our guitars, and we're going to have our own thing, and that's it. That's good for me. And whenever this church stops suiting me, I'm going to go to a different church, and on and on and on. There is, no, there is no soundness in theology. It is just opinions. It is just a mixture of emotions, of smoke machines, of drums. And one guy that leads it all. What happens when the guy that leads this Protestant church dies? Who takes over? Is he going to teach the same thing as him? I don't think so. This is what we have to be careful of. Use our following people. <laughs> we're following Christ. That's the difference. I hope this video didn't come off aggressive or attacking. I'm just, I get a little bit passionate about this topic because it's very, it's very important. You know, when George Janko dies, when someone else, let's say someone else takes over his podcast, are they going to teach the same thing as George Janko? You know, if Stuart takes over his podcast, will he teach the same thing? If Ruslan takes over his podcast, will he? If that Johnny guy, that guy is different, bro. We're going to do a video on him for sure, bro. Because that guy is next level. Is he going to teach the same thing as George Janko? No. And that's how each Protestant church is like. Sadly. It's not me trying to put one over them. This is a sad reality. Why is it sad from an Orthodox perspective? Because people get turned off Christianity because of this. Muslims will see you be like, oh, you have all these different things, blah, 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 blah. Like, this is a point of attack and a point of weakness from the outside looking in. And we get categorized as everyone is the same as these, these few groups. So it's sad. I wish we were one. I wish there was never any division. I wish we held to the apostolic teaching, but that's not the case. Now, for those people looking into the faith and trying to come back to Christ, they have a big mountain to climb with all these different ideas out there on the internet. And God willing, they find a sound Orthodox YouTube or Instagram page. And then they find a priest, a church near them, a parish. And they begin their journey back. Because otherwise, they're just confused and they're lost. George Jenko is telling them God's an alien. Stuart's telling them that John the Beloved was schizophrenic. Johnny's telling them that you don't have to pray the Lord's Prayer anymore because you're forgiven. And they're just confused. It's sad. We need to pray for these people because we love them. And we want them to come to Christ in the church that He left us. Not something that's just been made up recently. And guys, please help the channel grow. We're doing this for the glory of God here. I'm not, I'm not trying to glorify myself, but I think these messages are important. I'm trying to communicate them in an understandable way. You know, for you guys watching it thinking, this isn't that, I already know this, good on you. You know, it's, there's so many people smarter than me out there. People that message me, I learn from you so much. When I read the comment sections, I learn so much. I appreciate it a lot. And for you guys, keep watching David Patrick Harry, Father Deacon Ananias, Father Turbo on the Royal Path, Father Josiah Trenum, Orthodox Ethos, you know, um, Vile Ministries, Vile Orthodoxia. Look, there's so many people up there. And you go watch them. But I'm trying to make this channel for the people that are, are not at that level yet. 
And I hope I'm just a stepping stone. Step on me and go to something higher. I'm not, this isn't about me. This is about bringing people to a fullness of the understanding of the faith. And I feel like people have to start somewhere a bit more understandable. If I'm spitting like philosophical terms left, right and center, your average person doesn't understand it. I don't even understand it. I'm not ashamed of that. I don't even understand half of it. When I watch their videos, pause, Google this, Google that. I love it. But your average person isn't going to watch these videos. And that's why I like to show support to them with my page and share their stuff. Because I think they should be watching it. But the reality is it's, it's difficult for people. So I'm trying to make this a little bit shorter. And I'm also just trying to make it a little bit easier to comprehend. And God willing, they're on their way to bigger and better things than what I've got to offer. So please share this. Please comment your comment your thoughts and maybe we can build on this in the next video. God bless you guys. I'll see you in the next one.